So the topics of this today's uh, webinar is managing production rate for Kona XTDB cluster in Kubernetes using QDB. So let's start the webinar. Uh, so uh, here is the table of contents. Uh, the, at first, we will look into uh, how we can deploy TLS secure Parcona XDB cluster using QDB. After that, we will demonstrate uh, cluster failure recovery of Parcona XDB. And uh, in the third part, uh, we will uh, show you uh, monitor Parcona XDB matrix. And also in the fourth part, we will show you a custom configuration. And at the end, I, I will show you the live demonstration. So uh, let's uh, look into the Parcona XDB cluster architecture. So here is the cluster architecture. Uh, we have different termination policies. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have delete termination policy, wipe out, do not terminate, and halt. So if the termination policy is delete, that means uh, if you delete the uh, Parcona XDB resource, it will keep the secret and snapshots uh, of the database. But if the termination policy is do not terminate, then it will reject the deletion. Also, if the termination policy is wipe out, then it will uh, remove all traces of the database resources. And if the termination policy is halt, uh, it will also store the PVCs. So uh, this is the uh, architecture of the Parkour Next TV cluster resource, uh, custom resource. So let's look into a Parkour Next TV cluster uh, sample YML. So this is a Parkour Next TV cluster sample YML. Uh, here the API version is kibdb.com. Uh, uh, v1 alpha 2 and the resource name is Parcona extra db so uh, this uh, uh, resource uh, name is uh, sample txc and it's in demo namespace uh, in the uh, in today's demo uh, we will uh, deploy the Parcona extra db of version 8.0.26 and the number of uh, replicas in the cluster will be three we are also using storage type durable and we are also configured uh, the storage section uh, with this configuration, we are using storage class name standard. Uh, you, you can change based on your storage class. And also we have set the uh, resource request that is uh, one gigabyte. And we also have a system. We have also customized the system user secrets. So uh, system user secrets are, uh, let's uh, say your database use, uh, a, a, let's say your database use a, a different user for uh, connecting to uh, doing the task of the monitoring and a database use different user uh, for uh, doing the task of replic replication thing so you can uh, customize the users with uh, the username and the password so also uh, we will uh, demonstrate the monitoring section in the monitoring section uh, we have provided uh, the agent of the monitoring support so uh, this one is prometheus.io slash operator and uh, as a service monitor, we have uh, provided a label that is release Prometheus. Uh, in your case, it should be uh, the release name of your home chart, uh, of a specific home chart that I'm going to show you uh, very soon. And in the, this, uh, this part is also, uh, it will be in the bottom of this uh, whole YAML. So uh, here we have also some TLS configuration. We have provided the type of issuer and the name of issuer. So we are using a search manager for uh, creating the issuer and the certificates. So here we also given some dummy data into the certificate. Also, we have provided require SSL through. That means uh, uh, if, uh, if a, a client want to connect with the uh, database cluster, it has to be uh, con uh, it has to be TLS secured. And also you are using termination policy wiper. That means if you delete the database, it will keep no trace of the database resources. Okay, and uh, in the cluster failure recovery, I, I, I'll show you uh, something. One is a uh, uh, the clustering that means uh, you have the high availability and uh, it will it will fall it is a fault ter tolerant cluster that means if you uh, delete some of node or uh, it, it, the node will come back again and if we delete all the nodes uh, it will uh, it can uh, recreate the cluster without losing the data and in the monitoring of Parcona XDB, I have already shown in the YAML. Uh, this is the monitoring part uh, of the Parcona XDB. Here we have given the uh, release name as a service monitor and also the agent. And uh, this is the Helm chart we are using for uh, uh, monitoring the Parcona XDB cluster database. So the uh, uh, Helm chart name is Cubestem Check Prometheus, that is uh, provided by Prometheus community. So we have named the release uh, Prometheus. So uh, you have to mention this uh, release uh, here in this label the, that will be released uh, and the release name. And also we want to uh, install all the resources of this Helm chart into a specific namespace that is monitoring in our case. 
and also uh, I will show you the custom configuration of Parcon XDB cluster. So let's say you want to configure this, uh, uh, you want to uh, set some value other than default in your cluster. So you can mention a configuration secret uh, or in which in which the in the secret there will be custom data in this format. So uh, by default, the custom data for max connection is 151, but we want uh, max connection 200. So we can boost up our Parcon XDB cluster with custom configuration. This file could be with hundreds of configurations. Okay, so for today's demonstration, I have installed these things. Uh, one is uh, we have, I have installed the kubedb. Uh, uh, I have installed the kubedb, uh, and also I have installed the uh, uh, Helm chart of the kube Prometheus stack, and I have also installed the start manager of version 1.9.0. So okay, uh, let's uh, jump into the live demonstration. So uh, let me show you my workspace. So I have installed. Uh, uh, all the resources that I have shown just now, and I am watching all the ports in the demo names demo namespace. So I will do all the tasks into the demo namespace. I am also watching the Parcona XDB uh, resources that is provided by KubeDB. And here I, I, I will uh, do some port forward for the uh, monitoring thing. I will show you later. So let's create the demo namespace. So uh, the demo namespace created. And uh, now I want to create the issuer uh, that will be required for deploying TLS secret for XDB. So let's uh, look into the issuer YAML. So that is here. So this is the issuer YAML. Uh, here we need a secret uh, for the issuer YAML. So in the secret, we'll provide the CA, CRT and CA key. So let's create the secret first before uh, deploying the issuer YAML. So uh, we have already the CSCRT in our, we already have the CSCRT in our uh, current directory. Uh, these are the CSCRT, so let's create the secret. So the secret is created with the CSCRT file and ca.key CA file. Okay, now let's create the issuer. So uh, this is the issuer. So let's create the issuer. Here I am referencing the secret that I have just created. And I want to name the issuer PX issuer, that is Parcon XDB issuer. So let's create the issuer. Okay. Uh, so the issuer is created. Uh, now I want to deploy the Parcon XDB cluster custom resource. So before deploying that, let's take a look into that. So this is the Parcon XDB cluster. Uh, custom resource uh, that I have showed in, you into the YAML. Uh, it has all the configurations that I have discussed. So let's apply the sample exe. So as you can see, uh, the Parcon XDB is in provision, provisioning state. It will take some time to boost up the cluster. And uh, these ports are in initializing state. So it will take uh, one or two minutes. Uh, yeah, let's wait for one minute to this become the status become ready. In the Parcon XDB section, we can see the database is creating in DEM namespace, and the name of the custom resource is sample PXC. The version of the Parcon XDB is 8.0.26, and it's in provisioning state. So soon it will become uh, ready. Uh, while it's become ready, I want to exec into one of these port. We have three ports, sample PX01 and 2. And uh, when it is ready, I, I'm going to connect to, to the Parcon XDB cluster, uh, one of these clusters node. So 
uh, then I will check if the TLS uh, flags are passed into the server. If the TLS flags are passed properly, then we can say uh, the server is TLS configured. Okay, uh, so the Purple HTTP cluster is ready. Uh, now let's uh, connect to the MySQL, connect using MySQL client with the Purple HTTP cluster. So here I am using the root user and also the root password that is uh, stored as the environment variable into this container. So this is the MySQL uh, client for connecting to the cluster. And let's check the TLS values. Uh, let's check if the server is TLS secret. So for that, uh, I will show you some variables. So uh, these are the variables and in the variables, you can see uh, we have SSL, uh, we have SSL that is yes, we have SSL fields value is yes. And for in the SSL CA, SSL SART and SSL CA path, we have the uh, our created directories. Uh, and in the directories, we have the uh, creator certificates. Uh, in, uh, the certificates are mounted here in this directory. And also, as I said, uh, we, uh, we have configured uh, the secrets for this. So we can see the secrets from here. Uh, for that, I want to. Uh, I, I want to show you the secrets. So these are the secrets. This is the replication secret. This is the root and this is the monitor. These are three secrets uh, that we have created for different purposes. So for monitoring, we will use monitoring secret. For replication, we will use replication secret. Uh, okay. And now we want to insert some data into the cluster and uh, I will insert the data from cluster node zero and uh, I will check if the data is uh, uh, propagated into the other nodes of the cluster. So let's insert some data into uh, from the cluster node zero. So I have created a database. Now I am creating a table. And now I'm creating the values. Uh, I'm, creating, I'm pushing rows into the values. And if I check the table, uh, it will show something like this. Okay, so uh, now let's uh, exit from this node or exit into the node, third node uh, from this terminal and connect here. My CPU will okay, and let's check the table from here. So it is a different node, but as they are part of the cluster, we can see that the data is propagated from one of the other nodes. Okay, so now we will uh, simulate some disaster scenario. That means I, I am going to delete some nodes from the cluster and uh, wait until if the nodes become uh, online. So I want to delete the uh, first node of the cluster. So for simulation, I'm just deleting the port. Okay, uh, so the first code is in terminating state and soon the database will be in the critical state. The status critical means uh, all the nodes in the cluster is not ready, uh, but it is operational. Uh, if I check the cluster size uh, from current situation uh, from the available node, you can see that the cluster size is two. That means one node is not online. Uh, the zero has been deleted and now it's in running state. It will take some time to rejoin the cluster. Yeah.
So wait until the status becomes ready. When the status is ready, then we can say that all the nodes are uh, connected to the cluster. Okay, the status is ready. And if I check the cluster size, you can see the cluster size is three. And if we connect to the first, oops, I have deleted the cluster again. Uh, so let's wait for another 30 minutes, 30 seconds just to become online. So yeah, now the cluster size is three. Sorry, the cluster size is two and it will become three very soon. So what is uh, happening uh, underlying the whole thing is uh, whenever I delete a cluster, uh, uh, in the uh, node uh, when the node became uh, online after the deletion, uh, it try it has a coordinator. So this coordinator connect with the coordinator with other nodes and uh, decide uh, in which state it should uh, go online. So uh, it checks the current status of the existing cluster and join the cluster. In, on the current configuration of the cluster. So the cluster size is still three. And when it become online, I want to exit into the cluster and uh, want to show you that uh, the data is still intact. Okay, so the status is ready and the cluster size is three. Uh, now let's exit into the database and check the data. Okay, uh, let's check our playground database tables. So yeah, uh, the data is intact. So the uh, failed node joined that cluster successfully with the cluster data. That, okay, so uh, this is a partial failure uh, case, but uh, if uh, the Park actually database of KubeDB also can uh, tolerate the full failure case. So if, if the whole cluster goes down and uh, it, it, it became uh, it become online and create the cluster with the latest uh, commit or latest uh, sequence number uh, after the crash automatically. We don't need any, need any manual intention in this case. So let's delete all the nodes. So one and sample. So we are deleting all the nodes from the cluster. We have three nodes. Uh, let's delete them so the, yeah all, all the nodes are in permitting state and we will lose the connection from this uh, mysql client because this node is also in permitting state and as you can see the database is in not ready state uh, that means uh, if the status is not not ready, that means you can say the database is not operational the cluster is not operational you cannot connect to the database so some connection and if the database is in not ready state the service pointing to this cluster will not uh, point to any of these available or, or any of this node even if the nodes is in running state okay so all the ports are uh, available but uh, in the meanwhile uh, the coordinator of the uh, coordinator of all the ports are trying to communicate with each other and calculating uh, what is the latest uh, commit uh, which node has the latest commit and then it will boost up the cluster from that node and rest of the nodes will join the cluster. So it will take some time, uh, maybe one or two minutes.
Now let's try to connect with one of these nodes. Okay, uh, the cluster the MySQL server is not up yet. Okay, so they are uh, collecting the sequence number from each of the nodes and whichever node has the maximum sequence number it will start to step the cluster from that node. Okay, uh, we can see uh, that the status is uh, the status is critical. That means uh, some of the nodes is online and now it's ready that means all the nodes are online so let's connect into the database and check if the cluster if we have all the nodes into the cluster so let's check the cluster size first so status like so we have a cluster of node 3 and let's check if our data is intact and yeah we have the data okay so uh, this was uh, this is the demonstration of uh, failure recovery of Falcon xdb cluster uh, deployed by qdb and uh, now uh, i want to show you the monitoring data scape from this uh, database cluster so for that i want to port forward the prometheus we already have deployed the prometheus using the helm chat and we have a prometheus instance uh, that looks for the data with a specific service monitor and i have also shown you the service monitor in the parkon xdb yaml so uh, the pod name of the prometheus subject is this one so we are port forwarding this port into 9090 uh, port so let's port forward the port and uh, let's connect to the local host uh, of the 9090 port so this is the prometheus ui and at first i want to check the targets so uh, we have a target that is uh, the same name as uh, our deployment uh, we have a service monitor uh, target uh, that is in demo namespace and the name of this uh, object is a sample px step and we have three nodes that all, all the nodes are up so these are the nodes we are scaping data and if we check if we run some query here let's say mysql up that is for checking the server and if we run the query here now we can see we have three nodes and all the nodes has a value one that means uh, the cluster the, the node is up and we also have so many other queries here uh, okay uh, so this is uh, the prometheus part and uh, we have uh, one thing left that is a uh, custom configuration so before uh, showing you the custom configuration i have boosted this cluster with the default custom configuration so let's check some let's take a variable uh, let's take a variable into this default cluster and later on we will try to deploy a separate parkon xdb cluster uh, with uh, custom values so let's take a variable so variable uh, like next connection so we want to check the next connections so we have a 151 next connection that is default so now let's uh, delete the uh, current uh on xdb custom resource So we are deleting the custom, uh, custom resource. So it's, it 
in the port serving terminating state. And in the meanwhile, uh, I am going to show you the files of the custom resource file. So uh, uh, this is the configuration file, and now it's uh, with two values. Uh, so I have to create a secret uh, from this uh, file, and after that, I will just mention the secret into this uh, YAML. So this is a, a small Parcon XDB YAML with minimal configuration, and uh, here I have mentioned the config secret and the secret name. So if we want some custom configuration into our Parcon XDB cluster, we have to create uh, the configuration file in this way, and we have. Uh, we have to create a secret and then uh, mention the secret in, in this way into the Parcon XDB uh, custom resource. Okay, so now we, as we have the file, let's create the secret. So I am creating the secret uh, using this file. So the file name is pxconfig.cnf. So I'm just uh, I'm doing, uh, writing this command to create the secret. So the secret is created. Uh, now let's deploy the uh, Parcon XDB cluster with that minimal configuration and it has the custom configuration field configured. So this YAML. Okay, so the Parcon XDB is in provisioning state. And we have to wait until uh, the Parcon XDB becomes online. As the ports are in the state, we can exit into the port. Okay, so the cluster is ready. Uh, let's just connect to the uh, connect to one of the node and check the configuration. Let's uh, check if the configuration has passed. Okay, I'm checking the variables that I have configured. Okay, so the default value in the previous deployment was 151, but we have configured in this uh, custom, uh, in this deployment, or uh, in this database cluster. So it's now updated to 200 as, as expected. And we can also check uh, the other field we have configured, uh, that is uh, varied buffer size. So let's check the buffer size. And yeah, that is very similar to the given value 104. And uh, uh, that's all from my side. But uh, before uh, ending the webinar, uh, I also want to share that uh, we are also uh, working on the other features of this Parcon Extra DB, like scaling, uh, up upgrading, uh, volume expansion, and the uh, reconfiguration, reconfigure TLS. It will be available very soon. Uh, so if you have any question, feel free to ask. Uh, Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, when will this uh, 
feature that you demonstrated today will be available? Uh, it will be available in the next release and we have a release very soon. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I have nothing in my side. Uh, you can take on from now on the uh, I have seen there have no question yet. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit www.appscode.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day.